Hi and welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John. In this video we're going to take a look at RAM speed scaling on the i9-11900K and the i9-10850K in order that we can show you some interesting effects from increasing RAM speed and also make some recommendations about what the most sensible RAM speed is for any system you're planning to build with these CPUs. It's well known that Zen 2 and Zen 3 CPUs from AMD perform optimally with relatively high speed RAM, around 3600 MHz. However, we've often heard it said online that RAM speed matters less for Intel and you don't need to get particularly high speed RAM. We thought we'd put that to the test and run some benchmarks that we know provide really consistent results and see if we can get any better performance just from upping RAM speed. With the 11th gen Rocket Lake CPUs, Intel also introduced the notion of Gear 1 and Gear 2 settings for the memory controller. This is analogous to Ryzen's U-Clock setting, where it's important to match the memory controller clock and Infinity Fabric speeds to RAM speed for optimal performance. Now Intel have handed control of this behaviour to the end user, or the motherboard manufacturers, so you can adjust this behavior yourself for K-series CPUs. We'll start by looking at RAM speeds while controlling CAS latency, and then we'll move on to looking at Gear 1 versus Gear 2 to see if that has any substantial impact on performance. All of our testing was conducted on an ASUS ROG Maximus 13 Z590 motherboard using the recent 0605 BIOS which include Rocket Lake specific microcode and improved memory stability and flexibility. We kept CL timings fixed at 16, 16, 32, except for the higher clock speeds where looser timings were required for stability. We used our 16 GB Samsung BDI RAM capable of 4400 MHz speeds throughout but changed RAM settings to the primary timings and speeds shown in each test. Looking first at Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the 10850K, you can see how marked the trend is. To be clear, this is the benchmark reported CPU performance independent of the GPU. Moving from 2400MHz CL16 RAM to 3600MHz with all other settings controlled yields a 30 frames per second performance bump. Further increasing speeds to 4000 MHz and reducing latency, but by a smaller amount owing to the lift in CL timings to CL17, gives another 4% or 8 frames per second average. At 4400 MHz CL19, we see our highest performance at 195 frames per second average. That's 43 frames per second or 28% faster than the base settings. To be clear, 2400 MHz or even worse 2133 MHz is what will happen by default if you fail to set XMP or the XMP profile on your RAM kit isn't stable. It can cost you a significant performance. Diving into this a bit deeper, here's Rainbow Six Siege's benchmark, a fast paced shooter where every frames per second matters. Again on the i9-10850K, this benchmark is consistent and RAM speed sensitive. Here we get a slight break to the trend, with best performance again at 3600MHz CL16, and then performance softens at 4000MHz CL17 and 4400MHz CL19. Again, here our overall latency and the looser timings required to keep RAM stable at those very high speeds becomes detrimental to performance, but only slightly. Moving on then to Intel's latest CPU, the i9-11900K, and using the same benchmarks, we can see the same trend with a couple of caveats. Note these tests were performed in Gear 2 mode, because Gear 1 isn't stable at the higher memory speeds, and that's also why 4400 MHz is missing from these results. It wasn't possible to stabilise it in the gaming benchmarks at that speed. Here again we see the serious boost in performance moving from 2400 MHz up to 3000 MHz, and then to 3600 MHz. You add 55 frames per second average to the CPU's performance from those base settings, with corresponding hikes in minimum and maximum performance metrics. That's a 41% boost to performance, moving from 2400MHz to 3600MHz CL16. At 4000MHz CL17, performance tails off marginally. Again, we're approaching the limits of the memory controller, and the slacker secondary and tertiary timings dent performance overall. Confirming this behaviour in Rainbow Six Siege, working through the same settings yields the following results. Again, we see peak performance centred around 3600MHz CL16, and a softening towards 4000 MHz. And finally, just to confirm this trend and show a little data for 4400 MHz RAM on the 11900K, we were able to get the TimeSpy CPU benchmark to complete at 4400 MHz CL19, building the following sets of results. This is perhaps less informative aside from the fact of having that higher speed, as it's just a score, but it is indicative of aspects of the CPU's performance, and we know from other testing this benchmark does scale well with RAM latency. It looks like we're really at the bitter end of memory controller's performance at these higher speeds. It would take a significant investment of time in refining RAM timings manually to first of all stabilise the system and further improve performance. Nevertheless, 4400MHz CL19 does yield the highest score here, it's just that you can't play any games because they crash the system. Moving on then to the question of Gear 1 versus Gear 2 on Rocket Lake K-series CPUs, this is a simple toggle in BIOS that moves the memory controller speed from half to full speed in sync with the RAM. Gear 1 therefore reduces latency, as there's no missed cycle in communication. 
The penalty for this is that the memory controller becomes less flexible in settings, so we've got limited data because of the time constraints we've had to do this testing on this brand new CPU. Like Ryzen's U-clock and F-clock settings, it also appears to become unhappy at higher frequencies, and we couldn't get stable behaviour at 4000 MHz RAM speeds, 2000 MHz memory controller speed. We satisfied ourselves with conducting A-B testing to see what kind of performance difference we could see at settings we could apply consistently across the tests. Shadow of the Tomb Raider shows a small uplift in performance from gear 1, a few frames per second on the maximum and average statistics, a slight detriment at the minimum statistics. But this is nothing that you would really feel, it's almost within margin of error, although we are able to replicate these results. Looking at Rainbow Six Siege, again gear 1 versus gear 2, and all at 3600 MHz, CL16, we can see a small but significant performance benefits from running in gear 1, and we verified this uplift at 2400 MHz base settings as well. Whilst these differences aren't huge, you can demonstrate real-world performance differences in them, and in particular in Flight Simulator 2020, which is almost entirely CPU-bound in many situations, and does benefit from enhanced CPU performance and reduced memory latency. Running our standardised benchmark flight over Manhattan yielded the following results. Here we can see that moving to gear 1 and matching memory and memory controller speeds yields a small but valuable lift across the full suite of metrics, and it translates directly into improved performance. So what are our conclusions from these results then? Firstly, I think we need to stop saying that Intel doesn't care about RAM speed as much as Ryzen. You can demonstrate through running through RAM speed improvements that there is actually a significant performance benefit to higher speed RAM, and that the sweet spot is probably around the same 3600MHz CL16, but you could certainly yield further performance improvements by tightening up those secondary timings. Secondly, you really should ensure that your memory is correctly set up. It's a simple toggle in BIOS if you've bought a, a memory kit with sensible RAM settings embedded in it in the XMP profile. Simply enable XMP in BIOS and you will reap most of the rewards of performance benefits from better RAM timings. Be aware as well, there's quite a big impact on the um, number of settings you can change depending on what motherboard you choose. New Intel's B560 motherboards allow you to change memory timings and settings for non-K CPUs. And I'm pretty sure that'll yield some fairly valuable results on lower end parts that will improve performance if you're able to tweak those settings a little bit. To be clear, the settings we used here were quick and dirty because of time constraints. We left the motherboard to decide most secondary and all tertiary settings itself. Time spent reducing those timings could yield further performance improvements, but it's a time-consuming process and tends to offer diminishing returns. You have to check and validate results not only for performance, but for stability as well. For most users with a K-series CPU, it seems that much like Ryzen, you'd be best off starting with a kit of 3600MHz CL16 RAM or something with similar total latency. If you do that and enable XMP, you'll have gained the bulk of performance benefit for virtually zero effort. If you spend as much time in your BIOS as you do your operating system, then buying much faster RAM and tweaking settings as high as you can get them may well yield the ultimate performance on these platforms. I hope you found this video informative and useful. Please like and subscribe if you did. This is the kind of research we do so that we can be sure that on premiumbuilds.com, our website, we are offering you the very best value with the builds we recommend.